Okay, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. Construct the truth table for, and we have P and parentheses, negation P or negation Q. So this is a much more complicated uh, statement, but it still only has two truth values, uh, sorry, two component statements, P and Q. So the first two columns are gonna look exactly the same as before. But we just have to figure out the headings now. Now remember we start with the negations. I chose to use not P first and not Q for our third heading and our fourth heading. So um, how many more columns are we gonna need? We're gonna need two more because we also have this or and this and. Now the or comes first because it's in parentheses. So we're gonna analyze what's in the parentheses in column five, not P or not Q. And then in the last column, it's always gonna be the whole statement. So in this case, P and parenthesis, not P or not Q, close parenthesis. Now we've set up our truth table. Then we have to fill in the truth values for each of the scenarios but we do it one column at a time. So you look at column three and you see that it involves P. And where do we see a P prior to that? In column one. So we're gonna use column one to get column three. Column one has true, true, false, false, and we're negating that, so it's gonna be false, false, true, true. How about column four? Which column would you use to get column four? Good, you'd use column two, that's right. So column two is Q. To get not Q, we would negate column two, which is true, false, true, false, so we're gonna get false, true, false, true. Next, we have to analyze not P or not Q. So which columns do you think we're gonna use? The only new thing here, by the way, is the or. So when we, when we actually fill in this column, we're going to use the rule that for a disjunction. A disjunction is only false if both components are false. But we're joining not P and not Q, which come from columns three and four. So we're gonna use columns three and four to get column five. And or is only false when both components are false. Looking through columns three and four here, where do you see two false components? I only see that in one place, which is row one. Everywhere else is uh, has at least one true statement, so those will all be true. So we're done with this column, column five, and now we're gonna do the last column, and when we do this one, the only new symbol that we haven't analyzed yet is the and. And what are we joining with that and? We're joining the statement P with this big guy not P or not Q. These are the two things that we're joining together. So you wanna look for two previous columns that have those two things in them. So which columns are we going to use to get the truth value of our overall statement? If you're thinking column one to get the P and column five, to get the not P or not Q, you are correct. We're going to use columns one and five. And the rule this time though is for the and. What's the rule for and? Only true if both are true. So looking at column one and column five, where do you see a row or more than one? It's possible there's more than one where we have both trues. So notice that happens right here, that they're both true. Okay, so that's the only place we're gonna have a true and then everything else will be false. Okay, so that's the answer. This column here, false, true, false, false, is the answer. So in some of your My Math Lab questions, by the way, they will give you the first two columns and just ask you for this last column. And in some of them, they'll ask you for the intermediate columns as well. All right, now you should be able to read some information off of this table as well. What if I told you that P is true and Q is false? Then what is the truth value of this overall statement here? To answer that question, you're gonna need to go to the row where P is true and Q is false. There should only be one of those rows. It's right here. Because this is a list of all the unique scenarios. There's four unique scenarios. None of them are listed twice. So when P is true and Q is false, what's the truth value of the overall statement? It's true. Okay, and you, each one of these rows represents a different scenario. 
One of the tricky parts for constructing a truth table is getting the column headings right. So you're going to need one column heading for each one of your components, the different letters. So you're going to need one for P, Q, R, S, T, whatever letters you have, you need one for each of those. Then you're going to list any negations of any components. Then you're going to list whatever occurs in side of any parentheses, then any negations of parentheses, and repeat steps three and four as necessary going from left to right. The whole statement is the last heading. Okay, so jot these down. We want the components, any negations of components inside the parentheses, negations of parentheses from left to right, repeat. Generally, your statements are not going to be this complicated, but I just want to make sure we know how we would set up the headings for something like this. So first you would need um, each of the components, right? So the components are P, R, Q, and T. Then you're going to need any negations of individual components. That doesn't mean you necessarily have to list out negation of all of these because notice only R and T have negations appearing in the statement. So just need a column heading for not R and for not T. Then you work in the innermost parentheses first. So inside the innermost parentheses, not R or Q. Then we have a negation of those parentheses. That's going to come next. And then remember the repeat steps three and four is necessary. We're not done yet. So we're going to the next level of parentheses, the inside parentheses, and then the negation of that. And then we still have one more um, connective that we haven't used, which is this this and here that we need a column heading for that. But that is the whole statement. So these are all what would be your column headings. Okay, now let's talk about the number of rows. So I've only shown you two situations. One where we just have one component and there were two rows, true or false. And then here, two components, there always were four rows. It turns out you can always figure out the number of rows by taking two raised to the power of however many components you have. So in this case, two to the power of two because we have two components, P and Q. So that gives you four rows. A truth table with three components has two to the third equals eight rows. A truth table with four components would have two to the fourth equals 16. Okay, and it would go on from there, but um, we generally keep it down to four at the very most, and you won't have very many of those. Okay, so a logical statement having n component statements will have two to the n rows in its truth table. You should know this formula, because although I won't ask you to set up a truth table that's enormous, I might ask you how many rows would be in it. So you would, let's say if I said um, there are six components in the statement, how many rows would be in its truth table? You'd say two to the sixth and figure out what that number is, which is uh, 64. So let's look at um, which scenarios are possible when there are three components. We already know that there's two to the third equals eight rows, but what are in those rows? Remember each row represents a possible scenario. Half of those scenarios P will be true and half of those scenarios P will be false. Same thing goes for Q, but you can't just write true, 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 false, 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 because then you'd have repeated scenarios. So what you're going to have to do is then divide this in half and for Q you're going to have half true, half false, half true, half false. Okay, and now that divides this into quarters. And then for R, half of those are going to be true and half of those are going to be false. So you're going to have true, false, oh, that's for Q, two, 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 and two. And then for R, you're going to have one true, one false, one true, one false, one true, one false. It always alternates like that. So that's the easiest way to get this. This is the pattern that we follow when we fill in the truth table. So we all have the same um, organization to the scenarios that are possible. Notice they're all unique, like the first one is all true and the last one is all false and we have every different possible combination in between. Oh yeah, in our textbook they discuss an alternate approach to um, setting up a truth table. It's explained in your textbook. I don't cover it in the lecture. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.